Valens Research, Uniform Financial Analytics. The first place that you always come when you go to the Valens Research app and you look at a company is this, the PVP chart or the Performance and Valuation Prime chart. What is the Performance and Valuation Prime chart? It's literally what the name says. You'll, you'll notice there's a trend here at Valens. We name things what they are right? Well, it's uniform accounting because it's uniform. It's the performance and valuation prime chart because we're looking at performance, the returns of the business, and the asset growth of the business, right? The ability of a company to generate profitability and how much it's investing, it's performance, and it's valuation, right? We look at a value to, value to assets in terms of how much is the market paying a premium for this company relative to its asset base, and also a value to earnings prime. Think of it as an adjusted PE, but it's a PE on enterprise value basis. And the last chart that we have here for the five panels is our TSRR, right? TSR, for those of you who don't know, means total shareholder return. The R is relative, relative to the market. What is total shareholder return? That is the total dividend income and stock price appreciation that a company generates. And we look at it relative to the market. So what we're basically saying is for Gilead, for instance, it's the S&P 500 is the market that we compare it to. And we're saying, is this company underperforming or outperforming the market? And so you look here, when this line is flat, that means the company performed in line with the market. The stock did. You invest investors return from the company. When it's slanted upwards, that means the company outperformed the market. In 20, 2004 or 2005, the company, Gilead, outperformed the market by 60%, right? And then here, when it's sloping, sloping down, that means the company underperformed the market in that period. In this period, right, Gilead went from having been outperformed the market since the beginning of the period of by 430% to 300%. So it actually lagged the market by about 33%. And what we find, which is really powerful, is when we look at these charts, the orange and blue bars here for valuation and for performance, and we compare it to the TSR relative to the market, what we find is there is a far stronger relationship between these blue bars, which are our uniform accounting adjusted true blue data for the company, and the orange distorted as reported metrics for the company. And that's why we show all of this together, because we're really trying to paint a picture for you is to understand how good of a company is it? How much can they grow? And is the market paying up for that growth? And so when you look at it for Gilead, these orange bars are the distorted as reported ROAs for Gilead. These blue bars are the uniform accounting adjusted metrics. And what's so powerful for Gilead when we start to understand it, first and foremost is if you looked at Gilead using as reported metrics, you'd think Gilead was basically a cost of capital business. You think that this is an average, generic, boring company that you really don't need to look at. On top of that, You'd also think Gilead is shrinking right now, that Gilead has been divesting assets and that they've been trying to shrink and rationalize the business. In reality, what's way more important is Gilead actually is generating a 36% ROA. For context, the average company in the US right now is generating a 12% return. This company is generating three times corporate average profitability, not a, not two thirds, not two thirds of what corporate average profitability is if it was 8%. That is hugely important in understanding how good of a business it is. And if you think that management are good deployment, are doing a good job deploying capital. And also you would think Gilead was shrinking if you were looking at the Azure reported metrics, which is hugely important in understanding what Gilead strategy is. If Gilead is shrinking, that says, oh, they're not investing in R&D anymore. They're not focused on growing. They're harvesting their assets. They're saying, we understand HIV and, um, and, liver, and liver diseases, which are our core business. It is a declining business. Let's return capital to shareholder. When reality, what they're doing is they're saying, no, let's invest in R&D and innovate around things like immuno-oncology drugs and actually try to generate real returns to this business and do what we did for the last 10 years, which was having, having a company whose returns up until 2018 didn't drop below 40% any single year for 10 years. Right? That's a phenomenally impressive business. So now the next question is not just how good is the company, but what's the company worth? And what's important here is if we look, on a uniform accounting basis, Gilead is only trading at a 10 times PE. The market's saying you're a declining business and you're shrinking, right? That's literally what the market's pricing in. So let's understand what Gilead might be worth. And that's when these bars, the light blue bars and the white bars come into play. The light blue bars here are what sell side analysts are forecasting Gilead's profitability to be for the next two years 
when we take their numbers and we convert it into the uniform accounting framework. What we're showing you here is that sell side analysts are saying, hey, Gilead, you're going to continue to see pricing pressure in your hepatitis drugs and competition in HIV. And so returns that have fallen from a peak of 100% in 2015 down to 36% last year are going to fall to around 27% this year. But then they're going to stabilize around 27 to 30% levels. The markets, the analysts are basically saying, hey, this is how the company can stabilize. These white bars, these white bars, are what the market is pricing in for Gilead at the current valuation for Gilead. If you think about it, think of the weight bars as if you've ever been to a sports book or you've ever bet on a team or you've ever paid attention to, for your favorite team, what the line is for a company. Think of this as saying Gilead is, Gilead with the market expecting is basically saying the market's expecting returns to fall from 27% to 9%. Said differently, if Gilead was the New England Patriots, and the New England Patriots were playing the Jets. In essence, what this is saying is the market is, is saying that, that the line for the Patriots should be plus 10, meaning literally if the Patriots can beat the Jets by – if the Patriots cannot lose to the Jets by more than 10 points, that this is a winning name. It's a way to think about it because literally what's going on here is the market's projecting Gilead that has a – 30% ROA last year and forecast to be a 30% ROA in 2020 to see returns fall to 8% where they are on a distorted as reported basis. So let's look. If we think that Gilead will continue to grow, right, just like they have historically, let's say 10% a year, and we also think that Gilead can see returns plateau at after they have success with some of their immunotherapy drugs and they continue to have their core legacy businesses, let's say we assume Assume that returns are going to return to just stabilizing at around 40%, right? Using the embed expectations tool, we can actually do really quick scenario analysis and say, if Gilead did that, Gilead's worth 300% more than it is right now. Gilead is basically a triple bagger, right? If we actually just see this happen, and if basically Gilead just does what it's done historically, which is successfully invest in its business and generate a reasonable return on its truly innovative drugs, then this company should be up 300%. And that's the powerful thing that you couldn't see if you were looking at the distorted as reported metrics. Because if you're looking at the distorted as reported metrics, as reported PE, you'd say, yeah, the company's trading at a 10 times multiple, but it's trading at 10 times multiple because returns have collapsed to cost of capital levels and the company's shrinking. It is a declining, non competitive business who is divesting assets. Of course, it should trade at a 10 times multiple. And you couldn't be wronger. And the reason why you're thinking those wrong things is because of how distorted as reported metrics are. Valens Research, the world's leading source for uniform financial analytics.